Welcome to Love Connection, where old-fashioned romance meets modern-day technology. Where you hear all the intimate details of a first date. And now, here is our host, Chuck Woolery. Uh, thank you, Johnny Gilbert. Thanks, everybody. Nice to have you here. A good-looking group of happy faces. How are you? All right. The SRO here as usual. Let's get started by meeting our first guest now. She thinks that she resembles Liza Minnelli, and she says that she'll only date men who are marriage material. She uh, claims that she can spot a loser a mile away. Please welcome Roberta Flicker. Fricker, Sergeant. <laughs> Fricker, not Flicker. Hi, Roberta. How are you? Good, have a seat. Telltale signs of a loser. What would they be? Okay. Well, somebody who is self-centered. Someone who's not listening to what you want to do, what you're trying to do with your life. Uh, somebody that when they ask you to go out for a date, they say, how about at your place? And do you live alone? And uh, somebody that is pretty, you know, has a mind of their own and it's, it's geared on what they want. Selfish. Only. Right. Self-centered. All right. Going to remind everybody what happened yesterday. Now, we, the uh, studio audience saw Roberta's three choices. They voted on which one they thought would be best for her. And we're going to take a look and catch you up. First, there was Dale. His interests ranged from rock climbing to ballroom dancing. Or dancing with a rock. <laughs> and Dave, he's looking for an energetic woman who has uh, a good head on her shoulders. Bill describes himself as 172 pounds of twisted steel and sex appeal. <laughs> now, the audience vote was recorded yesterday. We'll get to that later, but right now, Roberta is going to tell us who she chose. I chose David. You chose David. All right, he's backstage. Say hello to David. I can bear it. Hi, David. Hi, how you doing? Just fine, thank you. Make yourself at home back there, okay? Sure. All right. Well, tell me about the date. Okay, well, I'm waiting for him in front of my apartment, and um, he gave me a rose, and it was one in a plastic container, like from 7-Eleven. So, well, no, 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 well, now you're assuming it was from... Yeah. It, I've seen them in 7-Eleven, Chuck. Have I'm you? not kidding. Yeah, I'm not yeah. kidding. I bought that so, at a florist. Oh, you did? No, they do the same thing at florist. Yeah, yeah, well, you know. 7-Eleven buys them from the florist. Well, it's the thought that yeah, counts. Yeah, I know. Did really well, I was looking more for maybe two or three, but that's okay. We'll live with it. Well, okay. you see, some... Some people think that a single rose is far romantic, more romantic than a dozen roses. They did, well, it, it, was, it was a nice touch. It, at least he thought of it. Okay, so now what happened? Okay, so then he gets out of the car, and he was much smaller than I had thought he was from looking at his tape. <laughs> kind of petite like a French man. He kind of reminded me of a French man. And he was very tan, and, but he had a very thick mustache, kind of like a walrus, and that didn't really appeal to me. <laughs> Because you know I like to kiss. We talked about that last time, too. Right, yeah, yeah, right. Well, well, there you go. <laughs> How'd she look to you, Dave? Well, she didn't exactly trip my trigger. <laughs> I, norm I normally date a much uh, more petite, you know, woman with a little better body. And, <laughs> and she had... She had on so much red eyeshadow that she, she looked like a walking tomato. <laughs> Walruses eat tomatoes, Jeff. I'm sorry? Walruses eat tomatoes. Well, no, she even <laughs> Well, now what happened after this? Okay, well, we're driving along. We got a ways to go, so we're talking getting to know each other. Well, you other. got a long ways to yeah, go. Yeah, we right? sure did. Okay, well, it, it was far enough. So we're driving along, and, and after about five or ten minutes, I noticed that, you know, he kept glancing at my legs, and, and uh, it was, and I have a pet peeve about that. It's someone checking me out up and down. So I kind of made a big show about, you know, like this, like that, and I kind of, you know, said that the flesh show was over. I was trying to play it low-key. Were you, were you... Checking her legs out? I wasn't interested in her in her body at all. <laughs> now what happens next? Okay, so he we go to the restaurant and uh, it's out on Pacific Coast Highway. Okay, so then I started talking about that I hadn't seen the snow in a really long time and I wanted to go there this winter. And he told me that he goes skiing quite often and he mentioned about six by the time he got to about six or seven spots, then by that time I felt it was kind of an invitation and uh, Was it an invitation? No, no. I wasn't, I wasn't interested in asking her out again at all. 
No, no invite. All right, then. Oh, this is good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, they want to be, right? So, so you leave, I guess you leave this right, place. Right, right. And where do you go okay, from Okay, so then we go downtown to the Bonaventure, and we went to the Fantasia, and we were the absolute only people there. The only people, and okay, where? at Fantasia and the Bonaventure. I don't know what that is. Well, it's a nightclub. We went to a nightclub. Oh, I see. And, uh, so I, we, don't, I don't get You don't, Claire? Well, <laughs> okay, so we went to the nightclub. We were the only people there. So we kind of made the best of it. We, you know, kicked around for a while, had a drink, and uh, the DJ sitting in his, in his little spaceship uh, contraption, you know, spinning yes, the song. That's, that's why I don't get up. It, right, yeah. Yeah, he should have took off, but anyway. So they, you know, he played kind of slow music, which is the only thing that I like. And then we got out there. Did and, you dance? Yeah, we did dance. And, is he a good dancer? Uh, well, he, it was kind of like a junior John Travolta or kind of American <laughs> dance slow dance style. No, no, we weren't slow dancing, no. Oh. I'm more into soul, mad, soul music, kind of like, you know, the Cabbage Patch and whatever, all that good stuff. And he was kind of doing, you know, I don't know, what, between John and Dick Clark on it, something like that. <laughs> well, let me try to imagine that for a minute. <laughs> John Travolta's big part How did the day end? Okay, uh, well, it was kind of, it was slowing down, and uh, he drove me back to my house, and we this got... This thing up. sounds like it started off slow and tapered. Yeah, right. Yeah, it was kind of a slow downhill, downhill slide. And so I got out of the car, gave him a little peck, and then uh, I looked at the 7-Eleven rose after I walked away, and it was already wilted. So I kind of felt that that was a, a good sign of how the date went. Kind of like a wilted rose. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think we can see who the audience picked for you. Okay. I thought Dave was just dandy. They picked him 55%. As a matter of fact, I thought Dave was just right for you. Maybe you guys uh, need to try this again. Uh, I can't even do that with a straight face. I'm sorry. But I, if you want to ask him out again, we pay for it. If not, you know, you can do whatever you like. I think I'll let Dave do his own thing. Yeah. Yeah. I, know, I figured that's probably happy with that, too. Dave, uh... Well, I think uh, maybe Roberta should uh, go back to her ex if he'll take her back. Uh, well, maybe we'll see you again, Dave. Thanks sure. for coming on the show. Thank you. Sorry things didn't work out, and same to you, Roberta. But uh, well, we tried. That's We're going to have another couple back in just a second. Stay with us. He says that uh, the women he meets basically fall into two categories, or one of two categories, and he admits that uh, some women might not appreciate his housekeeping habits. Please welcome Lynn Unkelis. Hi, Lynn. I'm fine. How are you? Doing great, too. Well, let's get right down to housekeeping here, Lynn. <laughs> are you a slob? Tell the truth. Are you really? I mean, well, you'd leave the socks hanging around your bed and stuff like that? No, no, usually in the living room. See? Well, there you go. <laughs> well, what I normally do when I do laundry, I normally just uh, bring it right up and hang it up on the floor. Uh, <laughs> that would not work for a lot of women. No, unfortunately it doesn't. Um, uh, no, in a di well, I like to keep the uh, clothes spread out everywhere so I can see what I've got, mm. you know, all at once. <laughs> Dirty or clean, doesn't madness. matter. No, the dirty goes in a pile. Now, what are the two, two categories that women fall in that you meet? What are they? Oh, for the most part, the women I uh, meet are either bimbos or wallflowers. <laughs> for the most part. There are exceptions. The bimbos usually have nothing between their ears except pure helium. And, well, yeah, I mean, you, know, you, you walk up, you say hello to them, and they go, Oh, my feet! You know. <laughs> okay. And that's about the extent of the conversation. Whereas the wallflowers are typically very smart, you know, CPA or very well educated, and they got all the personality of a wet sponge. Yeah. So, well, there's got to be an in-between out there someplace. And that's what I'm looking for. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, let's take a look at the women that uh, Lynn had to choose from. Now, remember, you're going to pick the woman that you think's best for. Her. Here we go. First, there's Kelly. She's originally from Gross Point, Michigan. Her interests include dancing and going to Rod Stewart concerts. She prefers dating men with brown hair and brown eyes, but Kelly told us about a guy who wasn't close to what she was looking for. He had these um, flamingos that were about this tall, and um, he said that they were plastic flamingos. He said that he used to take them with him to the beach so he could find his towel, and he would set his Walkman on his flamingos and everything. It's kind of weird. 
Next, there's Sherry. She was raised in Pavia, Pennsylvania, and she says that if she uh, can't find an honest man, she's willing to settle for a great liar. And here's uh, more on the type of personality that she wants. They can be macho. If they're a little bit macho, that's good, because I'm pretty overwhelming most of the time. And if they're a little bit macho and a little bit controlling, then I like that. But if, if they're too wimpy, wimpy, I don't like that. <laughs> Finally, Amber, her hobbies include painting and photography and card games. She describes herself as intelligent but occasionally airheaded. And here's uh, one of Amber's views on dating. I don't mind paying. I believe in women's live and everything. And I'll treat or else I'll have... I'll, I like the idea of I pay once, you pay once. And we never keep track. But, well, this guy really never kept track because he never paid, ever. <laughs> I mean, it probably took me three months to catch on. <laughs> three months. Not long. Okay, those are the three ladies that Lynn had to choose from. Now it's time for you to vote. Who do you think would be the best woman for him? Make your choice now, please. We're going to take a break, and when we come back, we'll meet the woman that Lynn selected. We're going to hear everything that happened on that date. We'll do that in two and two. Be right back. Okay, we're back, and Lynn's going to tell us who he selected. Oh, I picked Sherry. Pick Sherry. Now, we haven't seen each other since the date. We always hear from both sides. Say hello to Sherry von Sternberg. Hi, Sherry. Hi. How are you? Thank you. Good stuff at home back there, okay? Now, tell me about the date. <laughs> well, I uh, went and uh, picked her up over at her place. We talked a couple times on the phone. Mm -hmm. And uh, when uh, I saw her, well, I, I knew she was going to be a little bit big from the video. Just, you know, I mean, I don't like little tiny women. I mean, I, I just don't like. And, you know, I knew she'd be big. But I didn't know how big. She is very tall. I mean, she how is... How tall are we talking here? In how tall shoes. are you, Sherry? About six feet with heels on. There you go. Yeah. And that's what I'm not. <laughs> well, how tall are you in heels? <laughs> More without heels. Without heels, I'll tell her. Without heels, I'm about 5'11". So she's about an inch tall. She's well, about an inch tall. Does it matter, though? Oh, you'd be surprised. Okay, I would. You'd be surprised. Well, <laughs> uh, anyway. So she was a little too tall for you. She was, she was big. You know, she, she well, was, you're big, too. I mean, yes, you're I not know. a little guy. Yeah, I know that. Touche, just a cat. I know, it's just a woman. And I'm not trying to make this one. No, no, I mean, you will not be treading water in a test tube. There's no chance that that will happen. <laughs> well, visualize that while I talk to her. Hang on. Now, now, what did you think of him when you saw him, Sherry? Well, he's right. He is a little bit too short for me. And oh, he is? Well, yeah. As a matter of fact, he reminded me of some of the guys back from PA. Now, guys, you know who you are. PA, that's Pennsylvania, but... Pennsylvania. Uh, I remember my Let's geography. see if I can get this straight. Rednecks, white socks, and blue ribbon beer. <laughs> That's what Lynn's like? Red next That's what he off? reminded me of, I swear. Kind of really? like a bulldozer driver, you know? Bulldozer <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. That is funny, isn't it? Yeah. 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 Well, so, what did you do? What happened then? Well, uh... Now that you've overwhelmed each other with your look. <laughs> uh, we went uh, down to the beach uh, to walk along and see the sunset. But unfortunately, there wasn't one. It was a bit foggy. Now, what happened after the beach? Uh, and we the fog rolled in, and no. Yeah, really. We uh, went driving over to a uh, karaoke bar. And, okay. Well, karaoke bar is it's a small dinner club kind of thing, where the live entertainment is the audience. Uh, they show music videos with no words, and the people themselves get up and sing. Oh. You become their performer. I'll be darned. Did you do and, that? Yeah, I did. You got up and did that? Yeah. Did you? And I didn't realize just how far off key I was outside of my shower. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, did she perform as well? Yes, she did. Yeah. She, she can hold a good note. She just thinks kind of nasally. But oh. she can hold a, good, a note very well. Thank you. Boy, it's a tough room to work. <laughs> did you talk at the club at all, Sherry? Barely at all. I had a great time. There was a birthday party going on, and after I <laughs> sang, uh, no one there thought I was nasal. Everybody said, oh, you sounded great. And I said, all right. So I went and joined the rowdy party, and that was fun. <laughs> and so Len kind of joined some other people, and we really didn't talk a whole lot. Yeah, I... Uh, <laughs> all right. Well, now, after this place, what, what do you do? <laughs> well, we uh, decided to go dancing. So we uh, headed over to a dance club Trying and... to keep the flame lit. Keep that flame going. Got to do what you can. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> was it a struggle for both of you to continue this date? I mean, really, was it kind of like, oh, boy, got to well, go on with this? I think the romance is lost to turn more into just two people just having, you know, spending some time together. So you're at the dance place? Uh, outside. 
outside. We, we found a parking space right there. Yeah, we found a parking space after driving around a little bit. We found a spot. And unfortunately, the line came all the way out, you know, halfway around or quarter way around the building. And all that was there was a bunch of 18-year-old, looked like a bunch of rowdy teeny boppers. And that's not really my crowd. I can so, see that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so as a result, uh, Did you feel the same way about that? No, they were more of an exotic crowd. And, exotic? Uh, yes, they were the kind of people who study cold, you know what I mean? They all were trendy, and they looked like they were going to have a good time, and I was in the mood to have a good time. And uh, let's just put it this way. It would be like Cyndi Lauper taking Ollie North to a concert, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Drove her back home. To her place, not to yours. To her place. Back to her place. And uh, I consider myself a gentleman. Good. <laughs> and so I saw her to her door. Right. And uh, there we just chatted a little bit, and uh, then I left. How long did he stay? 45 minutes. <laughs> this is chatting. <laughs> yeah, a lot of chatting. <laughs> what do you think was going on while he was there? Anything? No, absolutely nothing for me. I was yawning. I was very tired. And I kept saying, uh, Len, uh, I would like you, you know, I'm really tired. I'd like you to go. And he just kind of hung around for a while. Oh, really? Yes, really. Well, that's a new one on me. Oh, God, standing at my front door for 15 minutes, I was thinking, just go down the stairs now, Lenny, you can do it. Well, all you gotta <laughs> got do, all you gotta do, my dear, is say what you think. That's what I did. <laughs> well, well, we leave this happy couple to... <laughs> <laughs> Let's take a look and see who the audience picked for you. Man, sometimes they okay. know things that we don't know. However, in Too this sure. case... <laughs> boy, it's very close, though. Look how close it is. The first girl, it's only one behind. Yeah. But they picked Sherry, 44%. Of course, if you want to ask her out again, we pay for it. If not, you can do whatever you like. I don't think that's yeah. a very good idea. I think she's probably <laughs> the same way. Well, things didn't go too well, Sherry. That happens sometimes. That's but, uh, all right. Thanks for coming on time. the show. Maybe we'll see you again in better circumstances. I hope so. And Take you care, as sure. well, Lynn. Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> Thanks a lot for coming on the show. And we're going to come right back to the next guest. Thank you. guest hobbies include bike riding and reading. She claims that men always get the wrong impression that she's flirting with them, and she says that uh, one look from a man can ruin a whole evening. Please welcome Suzette Banks. Well, so we've got a guy looking at you. What kind of look do they give you that ruins your whole evening? They look like little puppy dogs. Like puppy dogs, puppy and that dogs. ruins your evening? Yeah, they have sad eyes and mm -hmm. this little real wimpy look, and they look at you as if they want to kiss you, but they're afraid to do it. Yeah. So they ask, and you don't ask, you just do it. You have to be assertive. And if, <laughs> <laughs> then again, of course, I might not let them, but they have to take the chance. At least take the chance. Yes, yeah. be aggressive. Well, what, what do you think is your best physical attribute? My smile and this my one. dimples. I made these dimples myself. No, when I was... What'd you do, punch a little fork in your no, cheek? No, no. You, sure? you suck your jaws in like this. <laughs> and then you put tape over them. No, and you, Suzette, no yes, really. Suzette, you don't want to tell this on national television. It's Suzette, the truth. It's, it's the truth. Trust me with no, this. My you don't want to do this. <laughs> yes, I do, Chuck. <laughs> my sister and I did this. How, now, how long during a day would you put that Scotch oh. brand cellophane tape, slap it on those cheeks, and suck on them? Tell me the truth. How long? <laughs> Couple of hours. Hours you do that. Couple of hours. Can't you see this? What are you doing, Hank? <laughs> Going on television. <laughs> Let's take a look at the tape to see that song. I remember he was trying to vote again. Here we go. First it was John. Now, but John was born and raised in St. Louis, and he describes himself as spunky, successful, and slightly handsome. Uh, he admits that he can be stubborn at times, but here's a more attractive aspect of his personality. I can mingle with some of the professionals. Uh, uh, and fit right in with the crowd and by the same token you might see me at a rock concert the next day I think that that's really unique versatility and ability to change hats and be different uh, next there's Alfonso Alonzo pardon me he uh, enjoys racquetball and candlelight dinners says that his favorite nightclub activity is collecting women's phone numbers and here's what happens when he goes to a nightclub with a date when it's time to dance they really love to dance with me I'm an excellent dancer um, I have fun on the dance floor. I make everyone else have fun, not just me and my date, but everyone else is having fun, you know. See, if everyone else is having fun, that means she's going to have fun. Mm-hmm. 
Finally, Bobby's hobbies include uh, basketball and bicycling. He says that he's looking for a woman who's about 5'9", who loves sports, and here's the type that he avoids. Somebody that doesn't want to work. Somebody that just wants to stay home and take care of the house. Uh, I know how to do that already. I do it all the time now, so I'm not looking for somebody just to stay home and take care of me and not want to contribute. All right, now those are the three men that Suzette had to choose from. It's time for you to vote now. Who do you think would be the best man for it? Make your choice now. <laughs> Many differing opinions. Audience has made its selection. Suzette's going to tell us who she selected. I selected Johnny. Johnny. There he is. We're out of time. We're going to find out everything that happened on Suzette's date tomorrow. That's our show for today. But we'll be back tomorrow with Suzette and more singles trying to make a love connection. Until then, I hope all your dates are good ones. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye. From New York, it's Late Night with David Letterman. Tonight, star of Beetlejuice, Gina Davis, comic John Witherspoon, plus former football star Art Donovan. It's all next, only on Channel 5.